Hey, and welcome to um, another edition of Just Calvin. I'm just being Calvin and fucking up something. <laughs> Uh, didn't realize I had the uh, microphone uh, put in the uh, the earphone one. Anyway, uh, I have been known as of late for doing a lot of um, stories about COVID and uh, infections and all this stuff and basically questioning um, a lot of stories I see online that have an obvious um, underlying condition that... Uh, complicated the person to the point of death. Um, I look at those and this is why a lot of times I'm going to pass episodes, even the ones that were, especially the ones that were taken down by YouTube. I try to emphasize by going back to CDC and looking at um, non-peer reviewed but pure scientific paperwork uh, on PubMed, on I think it's a Med R V I or somewhat, some to that effect, and other websites that are uh, scientific and go through actual um, F F L C C C website as well, and other again other websites like that. Anyway, it seems like. Mainstream media, I think, is getting such a demand for coming out with other news that had nothing to do with people dying, or they're cutting back on those types of headlines, it seems. Anyway, this would be one of them, uh, it seems. Scientists disagree whether infection and vaccination give equal COVID protection. This was evidently um, earlier today, but anyway, uh, Dr. Aaron. Uh, Karadi, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, as uh, a um, psychiatry professor, if I can pronounce that right, at the University of California, Irvine, uh, felt he didn't need to be vaccinated against COVID-19 because he'd fallen ill with the disease in 2020. So in August, he sued to stop the university, uh, university system's vaccination mandate, saying natural immunity had given him and millions of other people uh, better protection than any vaccine could. A judge last week dismissed uh, his request for an injunction against the university over its mandate, which took effect September 3rd. While he intends to pursue the case further, legal experts doubt that his and similar lawsuits filed around the country will ultimately succeed. Succeed, excuse me. So can you his teeth? Anyway. That having been said, Evidence is growing that contracting SARS COVID 2, the virus that causes COVID 19, is generally as effective as vaccination at stimulating your immune system to prevent the disease. Yet, federal officials have been reluctant to recognize any equivalency, citing the wide ver ver variation in COVID patients' immune response to infection. Like many disputes during the COVID pandemic, the uncertainty value of prior infection has prompted legal challenges, marketing offers, uh, and the political grandstanding, even as scientists have quietly work in the background to sort out the facts. For decades, doctors have used a blood test to determine whether people are protected against infectious diseases. Pregnant women are tested for antibodies to uh, rubella, rubella to help ensure that their fetuses won't be infected with the rubella virus, which causes devastating birth defects. Hospital workers are screened for measles and chickenpox antibodies to prevent the spread of those diseases, but immunity to COVID seems trickier to dis discern than immunity for those diseases. Okay, we don't yet have full understanding of what the presence of antibodies tell us about immunity. The FDA has authorized the use of COVID antibody tests, which can cost $70 to detect past infections. Some tests can distinguish whether the antibodies came from infections or vaccines. But neither the FDA nor the CDC and the CDC recommend using the test to assess whether you're in fact immune to COVID. 
for that, the tests are essentially useless because there's no agreement on the amount or the types of antibodies that would signal protection from the disease. It's not if it's not what kind is if you have if you have enough to if you have enough of a of a T cell resource to be able to fight off any infection, and if you had troubles with those T cells, whether it be turning on the body or um, turning into something that the body can't fight or can't um, uh, we call them but the body can't um, distinguish it as something that could help fight an infection. Anyways, we don't, okay, so blah, 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 okay. Uh, we don't yet have a full understanding of what the presence of antibodies tells about immunity, says uh, Kelly Roblewski, okay, the director of infectious disease at the, uh, at the PHL. By the same token, experts disagree by how much protection an infection delivers. How does immune, natural immunity compare to vaccination? In the absence of certainty, and as vaccination mandates are imposed across the country, lawsuits seek to press the issue. People who claim that vaccination mandates violate their uh, civil liberties argue that infectious um, infection, excuse me, acquired immunity protection, the president protects them. In Los Angeles, six police officers have sued the city claiming they have natural immunity. In August, law professor Todd Zewicki allowed, uh, alleged that George Mason University's vaccination mandate violated his constitutional right, rights given that he has natural immunity. He cited a number of antibody tests and immunologist uh, medical op opinion that was medically unnecessary for him to be vaccinated. Zewicki dropped the lawsuit after the university granted him a medical exemption, which it claimed was unrelated to the suit. Bullshit. Student language. Republican lawmakers have joined the crusade. Okay, anyway. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, anyway. Um, Congress has urged people uh, leery of vaccination to instead seek antibody tests, contradicting CDC and FDA recommendations. Well, you have to remember this is the same CDC and the same FDA that warned people about using a human version of ivermectin. Ivermectin um, is used in Australia uh, once a person gets they break through COVID, and, uh, uh, COVID, they go in and that's when they use the uh, ivermectin. And that's the reason why this is that, this reason and other reasons why other countries have decided to stop using um, the vaccine because there's just too many, there's too many variables that are more risk than benefit. And that's how a lot of other countries are, are seeing it now. Um, and given the fact that uh, someone online said that it makes no sense for uh, for the the vaccine to be pushed so hard on so many people at the same time, and I I I say basically it's because of the uh, the EUA I think it is uh, emergency use Act, yeah, EUA, and they make as much money as fast as possible before they get to a booster because I'm not sure, but I think you may have to go through. Um, different stages of vaccination before you can qualify to be able to make a booster. I may be wrong about that because I don't know much about it, but that's what I can think of as far as the part because that makes that, that makes all, all the sense in the world, at least to me anyway. Anywho, uh, let's see. So two Pennsylvania hospital systems allow clinical staff members to defer vaccination for a year after having tested positive for COVID. Another in Michigan allows employees to opt out of vaccination at the present, if they pre present evidence of infections and positive antibody tests in the previous three months, in those cases, the system indicated that they were able to avoid staffing shortages that could result from the departure of vaccine shunned, shunning nurses. Well, if you want to read the rest of that, just go up to this and you can do it. Okay, because I have a very limited amount of time to read these things. Oops. There we go. All right, so let's see. And this one is about uh, companies that are, are going bankrupt, but yet their CEOs still get a bunch of money. 
Banker companies gave bonuses to top executives for going belly up. Chuck E. Cheese, Hertz, and J.C. Penney are all are three very different companies, but share one thing in common: oddly timed executive bonuses before their corporation corporate bankrupt uh, bankruptcy filings. Okay, let's see. Each company gave its top executives a pay bonus last year, just before declaring Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. So did Neiman Marcus, as well as oil companies uh, Whitting Petroleum and Chesapeake Energy. All told, all told, 42 companies awarded millions of dollars to, in so-called retention bonuses in the days leading up to their bankruptcies. The Government Accountability Office, or GAU, or GAU, sorry, GAO, found in a recent report. These companies paid bonuses totaling $165 million anywhere from five months to as little as two days before the company filed for bankruptcy. Michael Clements, uh, the GAO Financial Markets Director, said in a GAO broadcast discussing the report. The awarding, um, yeah, the awarding of retention bonuses by dozens of companies that have Chapter 11 filing shows and the U.S. Bankruptcy Code needs fixing. Experts told CBS Money Watch the change, uh, the change perhaps involving involves amending the Bankruptcy Code, a rule that Congress passed about 15 years ago. They said. Here's the problem with that: those same CEOs are the same ones who basically they donate to those who made that code through legislation. Now, a lot of the people want to uh, get money out of politics. It's not necessarily money in politics is where it's going and what, and what it's for, at least in my estimation. Um, I do think that lobbyists should never be allowed to talk to any representative. I do think that anybody who retires uh, from uh, being a congressman, senator, or representative, or whichever whichever. Uh, entirely would prefer I uh, should wait at least five years before attempting to become a lobbyist. That way, you're not just showing up the next day and getting a job somewhere. Uh, you're giving it a couple of years, and whether or not you qualify anymore, depending on the laws that were made uh, in your absence. Um, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. This refers to the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling is quite literally what has not been taxed out of the economy, the banking system, stuff like that. That also includes con private contracts from, from Pentagon to big business like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and other, and other places. By the way, some of these same places that have gotten these contracts are also have some of their corporate debt being bought off by Fed until they're able to catch up and rebuy those uh, repos. Um, but a lot of it has to do with yeah the twenty one twenty one trillion dollars from Pentagon that they can't find supposedly, which is basically off the book spending. Then you also have ten trillion dollars in corporate debt that that we know of, um, and you have billions of dollars in literal. Um, tax havens overseas, uh, Bahamas, you name it, basically anywhere that they go vacation, <laughs> that, that's where they had the tax havens at. Anyway, uh, let's see. This also obviously has to do with uh, the vaccine. So Finland joins Sweden and Denmark in limiting modern, uh, modern uh, Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Finland on Thursday paused the use of uh, Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for younger males due to reports of rare uh, cardiovascular side effects, joining Sweden and Denmark and limiting its use. Mika Salmini, uh, director of the Finnish Health Institute, said Finland would inst instead give Pfizer's vaccines to men born in 91 and later. Finland offers shots to people ages 12 and over. A Nordic study involving Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark found that men under the age of 30 who receive Moderna spike vax has slightly higher risk than others developing myocarditis, he said. Swedish and Danish health officials had announced on Wednesday that 
sorry, they would cause the use of Moderna vaccine for all young adults and children, citing the same unpublished studies. Norwegian health officials reiterated on Wednesday that they recommend men under the age of 30 opt for Pfizer's vaccine. The Finnish Institute said the Nordic style would be published within style study, excuse me, study would be published within a couple of weeks and pre, pre preliminary data had been sent to the European Medicine Agency or EMA for further assessment. Let's see. Now let's go with now you know what? Let's go with reminders of who I am actually talking to. Starting on the twelfth, Madeline Hoffman. Who is running for? Um, who is, well, let's just go over here and go to see details. Madeline Hoffman and Heather Walburden are running for a governor and lieutenant governor in New Jersey. And that's going to be a very interesting conversation. I haven't talked to uh, Madeline in, oh, wow, for a while, I'll just say. And then I also have Liv, who is a chair slash co chair of the Maryland Greens, who, yeah, okay. And also, uh, that is, um, by the way, the 13th and the 14th, I have, I believe, uh, Justin in B Moore, uh, co membership coordinator. Uh, I also have uh, Congress Kate, who, who is running against Chuck Schumer come 2022. Uh, that would be on October 15th. On October 18th, I have H, I have H, <laughs> I have K A Heard Jr. for Cincinnati, Ohio City Council. Uh, that would be at five o'clock on Monday, the 18th. On the 19th, we have Green Party's Fire Free co chair of, uh, I believe it's uh, Maryland. Maryland, I think Maryland Green, I could be wrong about that. Uh, yeah, it's a co chair as far as I can, as far as I can see, but that's two and two thirty. And finally, and actually, there's another one to uh, add, to, add to this as well. Uh, Javari Morris, uh, who uh, is works with uh, Real Progressives, and uh, talking to MMT, and also we'll be talking to uh, Matthew Forstatter. Um, I, what day is this? Uh, on the twenty fifth, uh, I believe at two um, at two o'clock. That yeah, uh, on the twenty twenty fifth. Yeah, twenty fifth. So that should be fun. Uh, stay tuned for that stuff. Uh, and I'm going to be looking for more guests, of course, to, to be on the show. Uh, anyway, so just so you know, this show is brought to you by and the two party system.org and their fine assortment of uh, merchandise. You have this mean, which would, which is if you're a Christmas person, there you go. Not a bad price. I had about 70 bucks. You also have beach towels, you have cotton face masks, you have hoodies, um, you have magnets, and so on and so forth. And see, we also, uh, for we are many pot, uh, dot org, where they talk about everything between current events and uh, see, Mark, uh, Marxist, communist, and other things, history of that, and what the difference between all what the capitalists get wrong as far as that part goes. Let's see what else. And this is a little bit of conversation with and by comparison, the Federal Reserve only increased its holdings of treasury notes and bonds by 116 billion or roughly 25% between December 5th of 2007 and June and June 24th, 2009, a period known as the Great Recession. Over the same over the same period, the Federal Reserve expanded its total portfolio from 920 billion in December 2007 to 2.1 trillion in June of 2009, a total increase of 1.2 trillion. Basically, what this means, as far as I can see, is every uh, every year uh, in 2008, 2009, they increase their uh, their the corporate debt holdings from what I can see. Yeah, be me and uh, the rest of what you're going to be hearing later on. So, um, and that, that is my uh, my opinion on um, financial stuff, and actually reading a lot about uh, about the market, not market, but uh, the Fed and uh, how they pr price set with interest rates and everything that even that MMT has taught me so far. I'm still learning it. Will always be still learning it. 
Uh, but yeah, check it, check that out at anchor.fm slash just Calvin. Let's see now. I'm not sure. I'm hoping I'm not raising the 30 minute mark here. Uh, anyway, so this is whom is running for Green Party representatives, other than who I'm who I'm already going to uh, be interviewing uh, soon. Uh, Bart Everson of New uh, New Orleans is running. Uh, Lorraine Burgess from Mayor uh, of Amber's PA. Uh, Justin Paglino uh, is running in New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, you have another PA here, uh, Con uh, Connor Mulvaney. You also have, let's see, who's this? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so let's see, you have um, Pam Gordon, who is running in uh, Minnesota. You also have Edwin G G uh, D. Jesus for uh, Asteria in New York. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I can't remember who this is, but okay, so I'll just say uh, Claretta for Lansing, Michigan. And as I said, this is the gentleman that I'll be interviewing on the 18th. Anyway, uh, so um, let's see, now there's something else I wanted to do here. And yes, yeah, so this would be the Jabari that I'll be interviewing as well. So no, that's not. Yeah. There we go. And this would be uh, Granny Gamer seventy one. Uh, she does uh, gaming on Twitch. Show you a little bit of what she does here, if I can. Let's look at spectacular. Join her on her uh, Twitch stream at Granny Gamer seventy one on Twitch. Anyway, that will do it for the day for me. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope my teeth are not too freaking bright here. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, uh, and I hope that you go to my anchor and listen. And uh, for all things Green Party, all things MMT, all things just Calvin. Thank you, and peace out for now.